One of the most common mistakes many aspiring engineers make is trying to absorb every piece of content labeled as VLSI or semiconductor on LinkedIn or YouTube. But in today's landscape, especially after 2024, hiring practices have changed significantly. As a result, preparation strategies must also evolve. To make this process clear, today we have come up with our video on VLSI career roadmap. This video is divided into three segments. First, we are going to discuss how hiring has changed and why the approach must be different now. Next, we are going to discuss about the core topics that every candidate must master, regardless of domain. And finally, we are going to cover domain-specific preparation, covering exactly what to study for RTL design, verification, physical design, and DFT. So guys, if you want to learn more about it, watch this video till the end. But before we move on, just a quick info guys. Simply Learn has got EPOS graduate diploma in IC design. It is developed by IIT Bombay, Department of Electrical Engineering. From this course, you are going to earn IIT Bombay alumni status, curriculum developed and delivered by IIT Bombay faculties, experience campus immersion at IIT Bombay. You are going to earn 36 outreach program credits and diploma from IIT Bombay. So guys, hurry up now and join the course. The course link is mentioned in the description box. Now first, let us discuss how hiring has changed since 2024. Earlier semiconductor companies typically conducted general hiring drives. A central recruitment team assessed fresh graduates on broad fundamentals like digital design, analog basics, signals and so on. Successful candidates were then randomly allocated to available openings in the RTL, verification, physical design or DFT department. Today, this model has shifted. Hiring has become domain specific. If the verification team needs people, then that team interviews and evaluates the candidates by itself. Even if the process starts with general topics, the discussion quickly dives into domain specific knowledge. This means candidates are assessed not on just fundamentals, but also whether they are ready to contribute to a particular role or not. So guys, you would have got a brief idea that what our employers are looking for. Studying only generic concept is no longer enough. A clear focus should be there on both fundamentals and specializations. Now, let's move ahead and try to understand what are the core topics you must master before anything else. Before you even think about diving into any domain specific preparation, there are important foundational topics that you must get comfortable with. Let's go through them together. First up, we have digital electronics. This is the backbone of everything you will design. So whether you are in front end, back end or verification, this is very much important. Make sure you thoroughly understand topics like combinational and sequential logics, flip flops, multiplexers and finite state machines. If you are wondering where you can start with, for reference, digital design by Morris Mano is still one of the best books out there. You can start from there. Next up, we have Verilog. Verilog is that what translates your idea into real hardware. Learn not only the syntax, but also how your code actually maps up onto gates and flip-flops in silicons. This is also one of the very most important topics. On the third priority, we have CMOS. Even if you are more interested in design or verification, you still need to understand what happens at the transistor level. So focus especially on NMOs and PMOs work and why CMOS inverters are so fundamental. Next up, we have computer architecture. Ask yourself, like, do you really know how a processor fetches, decodes, and executes instructions? This isn't just academic, but it helps you write better code and debug real hardware issues. Next up, we have static timing analysis or STA. This is where actually a lot of candidates struggle. So don't try to memorize formulas blindly, understand concepts like setup and hold time, clock skew, jitter, and uncertainty. Once you feel confident, jump straight into solving problems, timing questions that always come up in the interviews. Now at the sixth point, we have C programming. Yes, the same language which we generally study in our college days. Something coding isn't needed in VLSI, but that's a misconception. Whether you are using EDA tools or automatic flows, C helps you think logically and solve problems effectively. Seventh one, we have ASIC design flow. Take time to see whole picture. 
Know what happens at every stage from RTL coding, synthesis, flow planning to tape out. Understand this flow helps you see where your work fits into bigger process. So you need to have a better understanding of ASIC design flow. At eighth, we have lower power design techniques. So guys, I'll tell you a very interesting fact. In today's scenario, chips have shrunk to three nanometer nodes and that makes power management more critical than ever. So you will have to learn how leakage, dynamic power and static power affect your design and what techniques help to reduce them. So this is one of the very important concepts and you need to master that. Now, candidates who have strong fundamental in these areas consistently outperform those who just skim topics superficially. So guys, be patient, master the topic first and once you have this foundation, dive into domain specific preparation, which we are going to discuss right now. So once we have built a strong foundation in the core topics we have covered earlier, it's time to start thinking about where you want to specialize. Broadly, you will choose between front-end roles and the back-end roles. Let's break it down one by one. For the front-end role, like if you are more interested in coding hardware, verifying designs or making circuit testable, you will likely gravitate towards front-end role like RTL design, verification or DFT. Let us discuss each one of them one by one. RTL stands for Register Transfer Level. This design is all about translating functional code into synthesizable code. Here's what you need to focus on. Verilog and System Verilog Mastery. Learn to write clean, efficient RTL code that synthesizes correctly. Then in this, you will also have to understand digital design in STA. You must be confident with timing constraint, setup, hold checks, and how they impact your design. Next, you need to understand how to handle metastability and synchronizing data across different clock domains. Next, we had discussed about the importance of C programming and scripting, which will strengthen your logic and algorithm skills. And also, Python or Perl can help automate a repetitive task. For hands-on tools, start practicing with EDA Playground, simulate designs, write constraint, and synthesize your modules. Next up, we have verification. Verification ensures that design work exactly as intended. If you enjoy testing and debugging, this might be your domain. Now, the key areas that it covers is System Verilog and UVM, where you need to master System Verilog for test bench development, learn the universal verification methodology to build reusable environments. Then you need to have an idea about OOP concepts, then about protocols like AXI, AMBA, AHB, and also you need to develop debugging skills. Learn to trace simulation failures and identify the root causes. Now, next up we have in the front end role, DFT, Design for Testability. It focuses on making chips testable once they are manufactured. So detects can be identified early. Now in this, you need to master testability and ATPG. Learn about automatic test, pattern generation, and how scan chains are inserted into designs. Next, understand about stuck at faults, transition faults, and how they are detected. And finally, understand about clock domain crossing. It is also very, very much important. Now, let us discuss about the backend role. If you are drawn to physical implementation, timing closure, and getting a design ready for fabrication, you will want to focus on backend roles. Backend covers synthesis, physical design, physical verification. Now, the core areas to focus on are deep CMOS understanding, advanced STA and clock tree synthesis, and floor planning and placement. Let us try to understand each of this one by one. So, for CMOS, you need to learn how transistors behave at the physical level, like leakage currents, power consumption, logical effort, all that thing which impact performance. Next up, you need to understand how device sizing influences speed, area, and power trade-off. And finally, study about short channel effects and their impact on scaling and device reliability. So for backend, this is the very important concept if you want to go in CMOS. Next up, we have advanced STA and CTS. Go beyond the basics. You need to be comfortable with clock skew, multi-cycle paths and false path. Then you have CTS, which is clock tree synthesis. And this is the favorite topic asked in the interviews. You must be clear on how clocks are distributed, balanced, and optimized for minimal skew and latency. Finally, we have floor planning and placement. Know how to place macros, design a power grid, and avoid congestions in layout. 
So this is also very very much important guys. Now these things are covered only when you have a solid foundation on the fundamentals that we discussed in the earlier slides. Now as a beginner you would be wondering which path to choose. Think about what excites you the most. Do you prefer coding, simulation and verifying behavior? Front end may suit you the best. Or do you like enjoying optimizing layouts, working with physical constraints, understanding how designs come to life on silicon? Then back end is your calling. So first, make your fundamentals very strong, then go into the domain specific. Prefer the type like which one you want to choose because we have discussed about what role you'll be playing either in the front end or the back end side. And guys, one more important note that you need to have amazing projects on your portfolio. Projects are not optional. They are the first thing that recruiters will look at your resume. So don't leave it at all. So guys, Thank you for watching this video. I hope so you would have enjoyed our today's video on VLSI Career Roadmap. Thank you guys for watching this. Staying ahead in your career requires continuous learning and upskilling. Whether you're a student aiming to learn today's top skills or a working professional looking to advance your career, we've got you covered. Explore our impressive catalog of certification programs in cutting edge domains, including data science, cloud computing, cybersecurity, AI, machine learning, or digital marketing. Designed in collaboration with leading universities and top corporations, and delivered by industry experts, choose any of our programs and set yourself on the path to career success. Click the link in the description to know more. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.